you know, as far as I'm concerned, there are some things that are just plain out fucking evil. For real. Shit that can't be overlooked and cannot be excused. And when I stumbled upon such evil inside of my family's business, I lost it only to realize that my entire family had been battling this same evil for a long time. Back when all this started, I was the financing manager for my family's chain of cemeteries. This was and is to this day a nationwide business. When all of this happened, I'm in Austin doing training, basically teaching a finance manager there how to work with customers to make sure that we got our money back. Understand, there's a huge market for people who are underinsured and uninsured when it comes to the funeral business. Meaning that when a family member dies, they have to borrow money, beg for money, have some kind of supper, or raise funds in order to bury them. The only issue is you have to vet the families carefully. Because if you're not careful, the company can get burned. So I'm in Austin for a week doing training with the finance manager there. Friday comes around and I'm supposed to be on a flight for 8 p.m. I get to the airport to security checkpoint and realize I done left my damn wallet in the desk at the office. Listen, absolutely no way I'm getting on this flight. So now I'm hopping and left back to the office to get my stuff. Thinking in my mind, okay, I can change this flight to 1030, come straight back to the airport, get on the plane, be in bed with my wife by 1130, 1145. But when I get back to the office, and understand, this is a real office building. No cemeteries attached, no dead bodies are supposed to be around. Nothing like that. I'm walking through the building, headed to the office, lights are out, but I hear laughter like more than two or three people are laughing. Imagine the scene, I'm walking down the hallway on my right hand side, is a wall. To the left are all cubicles. Up ahead, on the right, there are two office doors. Be beyond that second office door is the break room, refrigerator, microwave, a big table where people sit down to eat. When well, I'm walking, getting closer and closer, and I can tell these voices are coming from the break room. On top of that, the light is on, but nobody's supposed to be here this time of night. So now I'm lurking, listening, tiptoeing, and when I get close enough to overhear the conversation, I clearly hear one of them saying, Hell, Satan. Then, he says, we thank our Dark Lord for getting us through this week. That prick David came in town trying to rifle through our business. Now, pause right here for a moment and let me explain something to you. The prick David that they're referring to is me. But this person's voice, I don't recognize. However, the next voice, a female voice, is one I did recognize. She was the head of the finance department I had been training all week. And the words that came out of her mouth shocked the hell out of me. Because this woman says, they think that this is a Christian owned and run company, but it's not. We run things around here. And then they all start laughing. Then you can hear them eating, munching and crunching loudly. Imagine the scene. I'm there, leaning my back against the wall, inches away from the opening, listening to what sounds like a pack of fucking wild animals eating. This goes on for another minute or so, then they start talking again about their next feasting. I'm leaning, listening, and none of this sounds right. So I said to myself, screw this, everybody here is getting fired. But when I say to you, nothing, absolutely nothing, could prepare my eyes for what they would see when I turned that corner walking into that room, I mean nothing. Because I swear for a solid three to four seconds, I am standing there watching them, and their faces are not human. And to be clear with you, I had turned that corner. They did not realize I was there. I'm in shock because they look like freaking lizards. You know, the green and brown lizards from your garden. Faces look just like that, except for add hundreds of tiny horns. Understand, I'm standing there for three to five seconds before they notice me. And then their faces change back to human. So now I'm freaking out. They're startled. And you know how people act when they're trying to hide something? They come close together, trying to conceal what was on the table. My mind is messed up. Part of me is scared because I know what I just saw. Then there's another part of me that's pissed because of everything I just heard. Our family did build this company over. We are God-fearing, Bible-reading, demon-rebuking Christians. And what I had just witnessed wasn't godly at all. I'm standing there at this mental and emotional crossroad. And this anger wells up in me like I've never been this angry in my life. It was like emotionally 
I jumped past shock, confusion, fear, and just dived straight into being pissed off and angry. What the fuck are you doing here? And these blank looks come over their face as they move closer to each other trying to conceal what's on the table. I tell them to move the hell out of the way and behind them I see this small white box and when I open that box it looks like a fetus. Yes, an unborn baby fetus with his legs cut off and arms cut off. Imagine the scene, I'm standing there looking down in this box. Now all three of them are standing behind me and I realize that the crunching and munching sound that I heard was them eating on this fetus. Then when I turn around to confront them again, their faces are lizard faces again. And I lose it completely, black out with anger and rage. I remember beating, punching, slamming, throwing them all over the place. Blood coming from their eyes, mouths, nose, choking, strangling, breaking. When it was all said and done, I snapped back to being my normal self, look around at the damage that I've done, and I'm completely confused because it was almost like something jumped into my body and made me literally destroy these people. So I take out my cell phone, call my uncle, who's the owner of the company, tell him what's going down, and he and his exact words are, Stay right where you are. I'll be there in 15 minutes. I get this. When my uncle first arrived, he looks at me like, what the fuck are you doing, David? Then he sees that fetus in a box and my uncle loses it. Now, listen, remember the woman I told you that I was doing a training with? The head of the finance department? Man, he picks her up, sets her in a chair and asks her, who else in his company is doing this kind of stuff? And she morphed into this lizard thing right in front of us both with red eyes. He takes one step back, looks at me, and then smacks the shit out of this thing, saying, I'm going to give you one more chance to tell me. Now, pause right here. Let me share something with you. You know, most people think that Christians are sweet, nice, goody two-shoes, and some people really are. But my father, who was murdered when I was 10 years old in his own nightclub, and my uncle Eddie were literally hell on wheels before they found Christ. I remember being a little boy in the ballroom and it was some kind of dispute over money that they had loaned somebody. Well, their associates find him, drag him into the ballroom, kicking and screaming, into the office, and I watch my uncle chop off this guy's toes. Yes, at 10 years old, I watch him chop a man's toes off. They make me watch. Now understand, that's the type of childhood I had. And when my father was shot with his dying breath, he made his brother Eddie promise to go legit. And that's how we ended up in this funeral business. After that, my uncle gave his life to Christ and then went through all the crazy drama of changing his lifestyle. But understand, this man is 52 years old, all muscle. And deep down inside, I believe part of him converting to be a Christian was to suppress the darkness that was residing inside of him. There he was, my uncle, a volcano of violence, ready to erupt. And he does just that takes out his blade and starts cutting on things drives that blade under this woman's fingernail popping it up now my uncle was standing there looking up at the ceiling talking to god saying i asked you to help me do the right thing and this is what i find in my company these things so he asks it again who else in my company is like you but he won't speak so he pops another nail straight up now it starts to speak to my uncle saying, what are you going to do? There is nothing you can do other than go to prison. If you kill us, you are going to prison. But Lord, why did it say that? Next thing you know, my uncle is instructing me to take off my belt, take out my shoelaces, take off his belt and take his shoelaces and tells me to tie the other two up, then go find some kind of tape to make sure that they're secure. He tells me, after you've done that, I want you to leave. Go get my car and pull it around back. So now imagine the scene. I have two of these things on the ground tied up, found some packing tape and wrapped it around their ankles and their hands and covered their mouths. I go get his car, pull it around back, come back inside it. It is a bloody mess in his office. He is on the cell phone talking to someone, telling them to come clean up. Hands me this bloody list of names and tells me, David, you are not to leave till you looked up every name on this list. So now I find myself sitting back in the office, blood all over me, in the computer, 
looking up a list of 15 names. Some of these people worked in this office. Others worked at the actual graveyards and mausoleums. Printing out the information, starting to compare the profiles, and that's when I realized the head of human resources for our entire company is on this list. Then, when I start to compare the names, it paints a picture as clear as day. Same last names, same maiden names. By the time I go downstairs and out the back door, my uncle is sitting in his SUV. I hand him those profiles and explain to him that this is a small group of people with the same last name and same maiden names. And that's when he tells me to stay right here in this spot until Flathead arrives to clean up the mess. And he drives off. 30 minutes later, this old man pulls up in a van. And I can clearly see why they call him Flathead. Out step two ladies and full has. Wait, wait, what are you doing listening to this? This is members only content. How did you get into this room? If you want to hear the rest of this, you need to go to imtalkwaters.com and become a member today. Yes, this is from the last album. I tried to tell you to join and listen, but you were not paying attention. Then you have the nerve to sneak in here and try and listen on your own. I should take your head and mount it on my wall. But I will have mercy on you if you go to imdogwaters.com today.